Hello my lovelies, welcome to my little cottage by the sea, the place where I love to stitch and craft my way to a vintage inspired and sustainable lifestyle. As we're heading into a new season I have got lots of sewing plans and I thought that it might be useful and fun to share with you how I plan my sewing. Now one of the things that has always been important to me but is increasingly even more important to me is sustainability and intentional sewing. I don't know about you but I get really overwhelmed with all the ideas that I have and all the ideas that I see online and in the shops and in magazines so I like to give myself a really strict framework of what I'm going to sew and what I need to sew to help me with my sewing plans and to be really intentional about the money and the time and the resources that could potentially impact our beautiful planet, I have put together the dressmaker's journal. I have put everything together into this ebook that you can download and use all the resources as many times as you like. But I've also put in here how I plan my sewing and how I go about it and then how I put all my ideas together. So I'm just going to share that process with you because it's what I do anyway. But now I've got a lovely journal that I can record everything in. So the very first thing that I do is I do a wardrobe audit. I go through all of my clothes seasonally really but sometimes I do it more often than that and I sort them into three piles. Things that I love and wear all the time, things I'm not really sure of and then the things that I never wear. Now the things that I never wear they might be of sentimental value or really beautiful pieces that I can archive and I will keep those but if they're something that I just don't wear because I've got a really negative memory of them or they make me feel awful then they go and if something doesn't fit unless I can do something to change that that item of clothing goes I recycle it give it to charity see if a friend wants it if I'm unsure of things it might be because they need to be repaired or I might not have pieces that will link all of those unworn items together that then goes into my must make list and then all the things that I love the things that are most worn could I should I do another version in maybe a slightly different fabric if so that also goes into my must make list and there might be things that I need to replace just because they're totally beyond their sell by date let's say and those also go into my must make list then what I do is I go through all of my patterns and my fabrics and I see if I've got patterns that are suitable I do lots of research I go through my many scrappy sketchbooks that I keep and these are filled with inspiration vintage pictures postcards doodles from exhibitions fabrics and so on and I get a really good picture of the things that I'm wanting to make and I record these in mood boards so I print loads of stuff out off of my Pinterest boards because I've got lots of those in Pinterest land and I put together a mood board and I've put these really lovely seasonal ones in here for you to use I've already started using them and I'm actually finding them really really useful because as much as I love a sketchbook full of stuff again it's overwhelm it's taking me in too many different directions and my little ADHD brain just can't handle it so to have a really lovely place that I can just put a board together or maybe a winter coat that I would like all those silhouettes all those ideas and it gets a really cohesive sort of idea for the kind of thing that you want to make and as you're doing this you can look research for patterns and I would look for pictures and then maybe start planning some pattern cutting projects and if once I've been through my fabrics I don't have suitable fabrics I might start looking first of all in charity shops and vintage 
shops and sites and then I would think about buying new. It's always a really good idea to remeasure yourself so there is a page for that in the dressmaker's journal to keep a load of measurements so that you can reference it on the measurements on patterns or for me if I'm pattern cutting and if you're pattern cutting if you're any of my lovely coven members over at patreon you'll be pattern cutting too so we can keep all of our measurements in one place I'm also in the process of archiving all of my fabric stash and I'm keeping those in a little section in my dressmakers journal you can collate them by fabric type by color whatever you would like I'm thinking that I'm keeping mine more as stories more as little collections maybe to go with capsule collections but the choice is yours I know some people prefer to do this in a digital way but I'm a touchy-feely person I'm often asked about fabrics and suitable fabrics and how I find fabrics so I've just put some information about that my tips and tricks about fabrics and what my preferences are what I like to sew with and then also there's the space for your fabric stash. Once I have my fabric boards together and my mood boards together and I've selected some patterns and things that I'd like to make, I have a Myrtle May in here that you can doodle on. So you just print out as many of these as you want. And I have big and ones and I also have small and ones so you can draw your whole little wardrobe on there and see that it all goes together. You can put fabric swatches on there, write notes on there, whatever it is that you particularly like. You can just draw directly onto the Myrtle Maze because her outline is quite faded so you can paint over the top of her. And then once you've had loads of fun doing all of that, there's a place to record the patterns that you are thinking of purchasing and you can do a bit of a, a comparative shop and make a decision so that you don't end up wasting money on a pattern that you're never going to use. And some of the patterns available out there, lovely as they are, are all very similar and it just depends on the sizing and whether you know that that particular brand fits you better than another. Other. Once you've done that, you can document your pattern project so you can either draw or stick the technical drawing or image of the pattern on there and record all the other information that you're going to need. So there are 23 pages in all and lots of them are information and my writing and then lots of them are pages that you can just print out as and when you need to use them. I have added a little tassel to mine because if you spend time with me here in my little cottage by the sea you'll know I'm a bit obsessed with tassels so I've put a little tassel on my one and just clipped it together but you can of course buy yourself a really lovely folder and put your dressmaker's journal in there and then as you work on pages just keep adding them and you'll have a really lovely resource it's a little bit like going to fashion college I get that particular zingy feeling again I'm really excited about using this for doing some really intentional sewing planning and making some beautiful things for my handmade and vintage inspired wardrobe as always my very lovely Charlotte helped me to work on this project she helps me with all of my patterns and resources and things that I do both on Patreon and here and at Tara Dayton Atelier so I'm eternally thankful I've known her for a very long time now and we just seem to work really really well together she took all my little doodles and less than brilliant drawings and created something really wonderful and just a little heads up this Myrtle May is going to be appearing on a few other choice items in my shop before too long. You'll have to keep your peepers peeled for that one. It's been a really wonderful experience putting together the dressmaker's journal and collating how I plan my sewing. This is basically how I go about it but before this I would do this just on random bits of paper and in sketchbooks and scrapbooks but now I have a fabulous really cohesive way in which I can do all my sewing planning. It's been an absolute dream of mine to work on my very first ebook that you can find in my shop on my website but there's absolutely no pressure to get a copy should you not want to. I hope that you've benefited from some of my ideas anyway on how I plan my sewing and that they will help you too. It's been a bit of a crazy month here 
in my little cottage by the sea, technical gremlins and about a bout of rather bad ill health scuppered me with my vlogtober plans in the end but I'm still working my way through all the lovely comments on all the videos and I am endeavouring to get around to answering all of you. I really appreciate you taking the time to correspond with me, to give me such positive and kind feedback. It really does help and I'm really appreciative that you do that. I've dedicated my dressmaker's journal to all you kindred spirits who endeavour to make the world a better place one stitch at a time and it fills my heart with love and gratitude to know that you share this wonderful sewing adventure with me. Do let me know if you have any tips and tricks about planning your sewing. It would be lovely to hear. And as always, I hope that wherever you are in the world, my lovelies, you're keeping very safe and very well. And I will see you next time. Bye.